Revit allows us to perform all kinds of simulations and analyses on our building design. Sometimes those analyses aren't features inside of the software. Uh, we have Autodesk 360 to perform some of these analyses. But what happens um, when you don't have the analyses feature inside the software? For instance, sprinkler systems. Revit doesn't do calcs on uh, hydraulics. So how do we get around the problem? Well, we either can turn to a third-party solution or use some of the tricks inside of Revit to kind of work around the problem. For instance, we're going to look at how we can do that with storm water. So I've linked over the architect's model and they've located roof drains and I've copy monitored those drains over to Revit and this has allowed me to get their positions as well as the drains the architects have chosen. Are they right? Are they wrong? I have no idea at this point because I'm just using their locations for now. And when I pick one of the drains I can see that it's copy monitored and it has a connection on it. And the connection type is sanitary because I can see the little trap here off the leader. But it's not giving me any relevant data as far as flow is concerned. And one thing to note about sanitary systems in Revit is that they don't track flow. Okay, so we need to understand that the only way you can track information through a sanitary classified system is through fixture units. This is also easy to confirm if you go down to families and look at your piping systems. So here you can see that I've been built in storm and overflow, which are highlighting in my system browser up here through my logically connected networks of drains. If I right click on storm and, and take a look at its type properties, you can see that I'm based off the sanitary system classification and it's calculating flow. So now that that's understood, we need to go and take a look at the roof drain. So the roof drain is gonna be the input point of the square footage the drain will basically cover on the roof surface. So if I take a look at the drain, it's got a connector, and if I look at the properties over here on the instance side, I don't see anything to input the amount of square feet that that drain would cover. If I look at the type properties, I still see nothing. So I'm at a loss here with this drain. I might have to configure it for my needs. Here's where we work around the problem. We select the roof drain and we edit the family. So in the family editor, I need to get to this guy, the connector. He's going to be the ultimate point of information for my coverage. So let's take a look at his properties here. He's set to calculate the flow configuration. What calculated means is it's going to aggregate uh, downstream information at this point. Well, we're not aggregating. We want to input the information. All right, so we don't need to be calculating. We need to be uh, inputting the detail information. And I got preset. And what preset does is it unlocks GPM or the flow parameter here. Well, sanitary systems don't track flow, so I can't use preset, but I'm halfway there. Then I got system, and system unlocks the uh, flow factor parameter as well as the flow parameter. Now, system allows me to set a percentage of the total flow that the connector will take part in. So I can say that this connector is gonna take part in 50% or 60% of the total flow. But again, I'm not using flow. Um, I'm using a sanitary system. Then we come to fixture units, which is the choice we're gonna utilize here. Now, we're gonna use fixture units loosely because it's actually gonna be square feet in our, in our case, because um, we're using surface area of rainwater. But that general understanding, let's look at the connector and how uh, flow is gonna be interpreted. So water is gonna drain into the dome and then out this connector into the pipe. The arrow here does not indicate flow, it just indicates the side that the pipe will connect to. So you'll see that it's pointing away from the drain. So I need to come down here and make sure that I'm flowing out. My water from my rain surface is gonna flow out of that connector. My system classification is sanitary and then I get to the fixture units parameter. And this is where the magic starts to happen. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta map the property. So if I click on the little button here to the far right of fixture units, I get three parameters from the family that I can pick from because this is a plumbing fixture family. When you pick plumbing fixture or as your category for your element, you get three system parameters called cold water fixture units, hot water fixture units, and waste fixture units. Well, these are type parameters and I need to be able to input a particular value at each drain because each drain is going to handle a variety of different square footages. So these three parameters aren't going to work for me. If I use them, I'm going to have to make multiple types of, of drains which are the same size, same criteria, but they're just 
handling different coverages, and that's kind of not conducive to how Revit wants to work. That it would be an instance by instance kind of value. So I need to add a parameter. And the particular parameter I need to create is a share parameter because a family parameter cannot appear in scheduler tags. So if I want to report on the, the data about the drains, I need to be able to schedule it or tag it. And the family parameter can't give me that option. But the share parameter can. So if I select share parameter here, I'm going to hit the select button. And this will let me choose the share parameter of my choosing. And you'll see that it's going out to my share parameter file and it has a group in there called plumbing and a parameter called DFU, which is drain fixture units. If I hit edit here to take a closer look at the shared file, uh, what you need to know is that you can have one shared parameter file for your whole company because uh, you can group your parameters. So what I did is I built a group, I called it plumbing, and then I built a parameter and I called it DFU. If I take a look at the properties of my shared parameter here, and I did this all in the sake of, of saving time, uh, you'll see that there's the name and I set it to piping because what I got to do is be able to associate fixture units, which is the type of parameter here in my shared parameter file, um, back to the original parameter, which is fixture units as well. So it's very important that these two work together. Uh, if you don't, you're going to get inconsistent units and then Revit won't like it. So I'm going to hit OK and OK and I'm going to pick that parameter now. And I'm going to make it instance based under mechanical flow. Because that's where I'm seeing the fixture unit parameter right now on my connector properties. And if I hit OK, it pops into the list inside my family. And if I hit OK one more time, I can now go up to family types on the properties panel of the ribbon and look at the new parameter I created called DFU. And it's set to default right here, which means it's an instance parameter. So I'll be able to provide a value for each and every drain. So I can select OK, and I can load that into my project now. I'll overwrite the existing version. I'm going to close down the family itself. And if I pick that drain there now, I can see that there's my new parameter, DFU. So it's shared to the family, and I can actually touch it now. Now let's take a look at the plan view here. The plan view is going to help me look at the roof surface and analyze how much coverage each drain is going to you know, handle. And I can see how the architect has pitched the roof. So what I did here to get the square footage is, is I put in a filled region. So each zone has its own filled region. And why did I use filled regions? Because they give me the square footage of themselves in the instance properties here. And that allows me to input them into the drains. So now all I need to do is pick that zone, look at the square footage value, and then come into the model and pick the two drains in that zone. So I'm going to pick the two roof drains here and I'm going to input the value I saw for the filled region which was 18, um, oh, sorry, 1789. And now after I put that in there you'll see that my system browser starts to take off because it's reading the connector data. Let's take a look at the next zone. The next zone is going to be this blue area here and it's about 1202. Uh, yeah, 1202. So if I pick these two drains in the middle now I can now input their DFUs to 1202. And I just keep on going. So I could do this for every zone of the roof. About 1801. So I'm going to pick these guys up here. And then input the value. And now I can see my total uh, coverage inside my system browser. And it's helping me to aggregate those flows of, of square feet. All right, now that that's understood, I can start to take a look at analyzing the system. And this is where I'm going to utilize the code. I'm going to base this off the international plumbing code. And one thing that it states is that your building has to be located geographically. And based on that geographic location, you're going to get an, uh, an average rainfall every 100 years. And you have to size your system for that. So let's pull up the uh, international plumbing code here and take a look at our building's location. We're going to be located in Philadelphia. So we're going to fall roughly around the 3.1 inches of rainfall uh, for the 100-year storm. And that's going to help us size our leaders and our conductors uh, based on Section 1106 here in the IPC. So now that I have that information, I can come down the code book here and take a look at my horizontal members and how I could size them. And basically, my pipe is sloping at an eighth inch per foot. So here's the first area of the chart that allows me to see what size pipes I'm going to have to work on. 
So because I'm at 3.1, I'm going to go to worst case scenario, 4 inches of rainfall, and here's my list of sizes to work on uh, of square footage. And then on the left here is the size of the pipe that it has to be to cover that square footage. Makes sense. So let's take a look at how we represent this in Revit. I'm just going to get rid of these uh, detail region, uh, region for a, a second. So I'm just going to pick them all one by one. Right click and I'm going to hide those in view by element because I can bring them back then. Um, and then I'm going to go use what is called a color fill legend. So on the analyze tab of the ribbon, I'm going to come down to color fill here and pick the pipe legend. So if I pick this, it allows me to put a pipe legend on my plan. And if I pull down the schemes that I have available, I made one already called pipe horizontal size. And if I hit OK, it gives me this color fill legend that has these various sizes of square feet in them. Let's take a closer look at the legend under the hood. So I'll edit the scheme, and you can see that it's pulling fixture units in the pipe. So the pipe is actually registering the, f the fixture units from the drains that we added the share parameter to and inputted the square footage values into. And based on the flow inside the pipe, the fixture unit count inside the pipe, it's color coding it based on this legend. So if we take a look at the um, chart here for 4 inches, 1800 is going to be a 4 inch pipe. Uh, for 53, 50 and up, it's going to be, uh, you know, 11,500, or sorry, 6 inch pipe. And then for anything above that, it'll be 8 inch pipe and so on. So that's how I can use the software to give me some kind of idea of what pipe sizes I have to work with. So here I can see that I'm probably going to need 6 inch pipe for this magenta, this deep purple color in this case. Now another way we can go about it is through the tagging. So if I go ahead and I look at these tags here, tagging the roof drains, I can record or report the information regarding what the coverage is on the drain. So I'm going to edit the family, and it has a label in it. So here's the, the tag family, and if I edit that label, I can see it's pulling the type mark. Well, I don't really want the type mark, so I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to put in the uh, mark value. This is the instance parameter, so I'll just add that to the right. But the next thing I want to do is pull up that DFU parameter, but it's not available. So I need to share it to this tag family by clicking the Add Parameter button here. And then I go through the process of finding the shared file and picking the shared parameter under the right group and hitting OK. Now it's inside of the tag uh, family, and then I can add it to the right. I'm going to break this and put parentheses around it. And I'm going to fake everybody out by saying that this is square feet and not fixture units, even though it is. And I'll just go ahead and tweak the uh, formatting here a little bit so it doesn't wrap. And then load it back into the project. And now you can see that it's giving me the instance mark value of the drain and its basic coverage. I can also do this on the pipe tag. So i got a pipe tag here that allows me to do the same thing. So if I edit that family, I can pick that label. But in this case, I'm not going to use DFU because fixture units is an inherent system property inside a pipe because pipes are system families. So you'll see size here. I'm going to add fixture units to the right as well. And using the same formatting, put parentheses around it. So it looks nearly identical to the, uh, the drain uh, tag. So I'm going to put square feet in here. Make sure I got it capitalized. There we go, and hit OK. And again, do a little bit of formatting. And then uh, load it back into the project. And overwrite the existing version. And there you can see how you start to see my pipe sizes uh, for coverage come in. Now, using that graphical detail information and the chart up here, so I got four, five, six, and eight inch pipes. I can see that it's this purple color, so that says I can go to a 5-inch pipe, but I probably won't do that. I'll probably hop right up to 6 uh, just to play it on the safe side uh, because we're not going to use 5-inch diameter pipe. So now that I know that, I can go and change my my pipe drains here, to uh, my roof drains, excuse me, to a 6-inch pipe um, connection. So I'll use a 6-inch drain. And then I can go and change the size of my network. So I'll just tab select the whole network here. 
I'll use the filter to get rid of the plumbing fixtures and then I'll go ahead and size it down to six inch and it's just that easy now here I'm, I'm well below the four inch range so this one drain here could actually be a four inch drain so I'll pick him I'll go up here and set him to four inch and his pipe which would be all this stuff here can actually be sized down even further so I'm gonna get rid of the plumbing fixture and send him down to four inch so this is how I can use the information to make the best informed decision on how to size my pipe network now I can also look at the vertical leaders so the, or the conductors in this case so I'm just gonna swing through my views here and here I got my vertical uh, conductors and what I'm gonna do is refer back to the code again to see what's the best size pipe to use in this case uh, is six inch sufficient so if I go back to my code and I'm again in the four inch range I can come up to the size of circular vertical conductors in liters look at four inches here and look at the coverage and then look at the sizes that are available so 4792 puts me up into the 8650 range here which means five inch pipe but again I'm not going to use five inch pipe so I'm going to use six and I can see that I'm in code so I, I basically covered everything that I could using the tools that are available to me to Revit to make the best informed decision on how to size my pipe network now to validate my fixture counts or my square footage coverage in this case I can make a schedule so the last piece is the schedule and here I can see the total flows in each of the system networks here that are provided um, by the model and this allows me to put this on a sheet and report on that detail information so that's how I can leverage uh, various tools inside of Revit to make the informed decisions on engineering the system even though I don't have a little push button you know, automated process like heating and cooling loads or structural analysis